What were you smoking? Let's start there. Hollyweed was a plate that I started spinning two and a half years ago, and I honestly thought, like, well, that's it. It'll spin and I'll never touch it again. Now we're getting to kind of go back to it, and it's exciting. It happened at a time right after I had the heart attack, man, so that's kind of fueled it for me, because I was like, I used to be like, well, it didn't work. I don't want to bother anybody with this anymore and stuff. I'll just sul kind of skulk away. And after the heart attack, I was like, it, I almost died. Like, let's do everything. And so the idea of doing this show falls squarely in the crotch of that, of doing everything. And it, it's, it's fun, it's nerve wracking and stuff. And I think it's the first step to a larger TV career. It's, it's definitely got like a, a Clerks-esque vibe too, which it's, is a lot more weed. Literally, <laughs> yes. It's Clerks in a weed store. Like when I had written Clerks years ago, I wrote the part of Randall to play myself, which is why he has all the best jokes. And then as we got close to production, I was like, I'm no actor, I can't do this. Why did I think I could act? Which is weird because I never stopped to say, I'm no director. Why did I think I could direct? And I had zero experience in it's both like fields. having imposter syndrome. A little bit, yeah. always, but I had that my entire life. I mean, I'm into this job now. Uh, next year is going to be my 25th year, 25 mm -hmm. years since Clerks. And so a quarter of a century in, there are days you absolutely feel like a fraud, a pretender, a faker, and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, the good news is it's a make-pretend business. Mm -hmm. So being a fraud, a faker, a make-pretend <laughs> actually kind of works. It's on game. Um, the, the show, you're right, that there's a pilot, but then there was immediately like that crowdfunding push for more episodes. Have you had to change up your, your smoking habits, you know, post-surgery? No. Oh, post-surgery, no. After the heart attack, there was uh, one day where I didn't smoke weed. I vaped it. Like I didn't smoke a joint because I was like, oh man, like maybe that had something to do with it. But I talked to my doctor, my GP, like a week after the heart attack, and I was like, I hate asking this question, but like, you know, I smoked a lot of weed that day, and then I had that heart attack. Do you think those two things are tied together? And she was like, no. In fact, uh, I didn't. You say that you were calm the whole time, and I was like, yeah. They kept talking about the paramedics. Like, you're really calm, man. That's gonna get you through this and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I was super calm. She's like probably because you were so high. She's like, that joint you smoked probably saved your life. I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, when people find out they're having a heart attack and they're told that, it compounds the heart attack. Like right. suddenly you're like, I'm gonna die and they get real nervous and it makes it even worse. And she was like, you were blazed. So you were like, I'm, I'm dying? Okay, like I just took it in stride. And I was like, what next? So she was like, the fact that you were calm, the fact that you smoked weed probably saved your life. I was like, I put that on a t-shirt? She said, do whatever you want. <laughs> do whatever you want. Um, yeah, that's pretty incredible. We'd saved, we'd, we'd saved you. That's that's true. That is literally you a You heard it here story. first, kids. Yes, so tell your parents. Every time they're like, you can't smoke weed, but like, it saved that fat guy from Clerks' life. And now he's not so fat anymore. I dropped a bunch of weight because of it. You look incredible. Thank, I don't know about that, but thank you. Thank you. I did drop a bunch of weight. I went vegan. Yeah, that was, I saw that. That was the big difference. That was the big life change. A lot of people were like, Oh man, like now is your work gonna be different? Or I guess they mean better. And I'm like, no, cause like I never held anything back in the job, right? Like if you've seen Tusk, clearly there's a guy who's not like, I don't know if I should tell this story. Like I have no, no uh, bar whatsoever. So I just make whatever I want. But it was on the personal side where the changes came. Like, you know, I just assumed I'd be fat my whole life and stuff and I'd never see my high school weight again or any of those things and whatnot. I'm 47 years old. So that was all in my rear view. But after the heart attack, suddenly I was like, all right, well, I never want to be back in that room again with somebody going up my groin to get to my heart through my femoral artery and telling me that like there's a 20% chance that I'll live and an 80% chance I'll die. I was like, I never want to be back in this room. How do I get away from that? And the nutritionist of the hospital was like, you go vegan, vegan, cut out all the animal products. You won't have any of that cholesterol. You won't have an occluded LAD, a Widowmaker and stuff. And so I was like, all right, you know, I ate anything I wanted my whole life. Let me try one year just going flat out vegan and so far like so good honestly like i'm not a i'm I, I got no skin in the game so i'm not like selling it and shit like that but i don't get the meat sweats anymore i don't know if you've ever had that but you ever eat so much where you're like oh you just feel like nauseated time. from food i have gone to veggie grill and packed packed like nachos and a beyond burger and stuff like that and even a wonder brat never felt sick full sated but never like, oh, I've eaten too much. And back in the day, I'd eat too much and be like, I need hair of the dog. So I'd eat more and get even sicker. Now I don't do that. You can eat as much as you want. You never really get sick when it's plant-based. This is just a little information for those wondering. Yeah, go vegan, smoke a lot of weed. There it is. Green, I got green, green, green. <laughs> just all the green. Yeah. I'm upset. Half a million on my head I can't accept, yeah. Do you know what time the Degrassi Hall H panel is? No, I don't, but I, you know, that's because I went to my own personal Degrassi panel a few mm -hmm. weeks ago on the, on the Drake video shoot. That was nuts. Yeah, uh, can we talk about that? Like, how did that come together? I, I mean, I, I don't know how it came together for them. I guess 
like he was always thinking about one day I want to do a Degrassi video and that's the one they picked and stuff. So I only got involved because they wrote to us and said, hey, you want to be, you want to be in the video. Uh, Jay and I had done bit parts uh, over a few episodes in Degrassi, like season four, I think it was, in Degrassi Next Generation. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, yeah, it was, uh, honestly, for my money, no, it was. No, honestly, it is. It is. Four and five are yeah, the best. Yes. Four and five. Well, I, I go three, too, because I love the Manny and Craig romance. Oh, you're right, you're and right. And that, right. that really captured my imagination when I was younger. So, uh, I, you know, I'm a big fan of that world, always have been. And because of that, when they were making the video, he's like, why don't you guys come up? Which is really nice to be involved in a class reunion that we weren't technically a part of the class. Like all those kids literally went to school, to fake school and real school together. Right. And so that we got to carpet bag and come along for the ride was really nice. But it was sweet for Degrassi fan because you're just sitting there watching all these kids realizing like they are each other's friends. This is their childhood. They all grew up together on this show. So this weird fake reunion in the middle of this music video mm -hmm. is like an actual school reunion yeah. that's going on for these kids. It was, it was, it was very nice to be around there for. I, I like to think of the whole thing as canon. I agree completely. That, that to me, as a Degrassi fan, I look at that video. Again. Jimmy got out of the chair Jimmy years thought. later. Absolutely. Um, and also, Rick survived yeah. and then was killed then <laughs> later in the hallways. But I, I, as a guy who was a big fan of the show, I, when they were shooting it, I, I turned to the director, Karina, at one point. I was like, this is the, like the most expensive and edgiest episode of Degrassi that ever happened. <laughs> it really goes there. It, it did, that one certainly went there. It really is crazy though because when when Drake came around, I was like, "That is Aubrey Graham." Like, yeah. it was me such, too. Me how too. How crazy has that been to watch? It's, it was. It's weird. Well, it was weird to go to the shoot. Last time I hung out with him mm -hmm. or worked with him, he was Aubrey. Yeah. And then this time he's got like a secret identity. He's got a different name altogether. So. I just talk right to him. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to be like, hey, Aubrey, and have him be like, it's Drake now. And I didn't want to be like, hey, Drake, and have him be like, dude, it's Aubrey. So I was just like, how are you? Hello. Yeah, you? I looked right at him. You, you, Pretty it's much you. all of Comic Con, you're like, hey, hey. Yeah, there's a lot what of that. What the hell is that guy's name again? No doubt, as you sit there trying to remember, yeah. I'm like, what is his name? And then when he leaves, you're like, Jason Momoa, that was it.